Good morning and manakkam. In this video, we're going to be reading from Dancing with Shiva, Hinduism's contemporary catechism written by Sadguru Sivaya Subramanya Swami, a richly illustrated source book of Indian spirituality in question and answer form, exploring how to know the divine, honor all creation, and see God everywhere in everyone. Today's lesson is lesson 121, and we'll begin by reading the caption to the facing image. Saint Tirunavakarasar lived in South India in the 8th century, calling himself the servant of the servants of Shiva. He loved to clean the paths in front of temples and carried a tool for the task. He wrote holy hymns that are sung today by millions. Lesson 121: Who are Hinduism's spiritual leaders? Shloka 121: The saints, sages, and satgurus who commune with God and gods through devotion and meditation are Hinduism's holy men and women. We revere them and strive to follow their example and words of wisdom. Om. Bhashya. There are and have always been many holy men and women within the Sanadana Dharma. They are considered holy because of their loving surrender to God and the gods, their dedication to our faith, their accomplishments and profound realizations. Their knowing is more important than their learning, their purity more essential than their position. It is very difficult to be so disciplined and devoted, and so we honor and love those who have attained God's grace and worship the divine within them, not their personality or humanness. Because of Hinduism's great diversity and decentralized organization, holy ones are not universally canonized, but there is no single ecclesiastical hierarchy to do this. Still, saints, sages, and sadgurus are sanctified by followers within their own sampradaya. Each within his or her own sphere of devotees is the authority on religious matters, listened to and obeyed as such. The Vedas declare, not understanding, and yet desires to do so. I ask the wise who know, myself not knowing. Who may he be? The one in the form of the unborn, who props in their place the six universal regions. Om Namah Shivaya. Good morning and manakam. In this video, we're going to be reading from Living with Shiva, Hinduism's contemporary culture, written by Sadguru Savaya Subramanya Swami. 365 daily lessons based on ancient Vedic laws disclosing how to approach family, money, relationships, technology, food, worship, yoga and karma to live a truly spiritual life. Today's lesson is lesson 121 and the topic is confession and penance. As a mature being in the higher nature above the Muladhara Chakra, ever seeking higher plateaus through sadhana, the Shaivite seeks peace whenever the mind is troubled. How does such a Shaivite confess? How does one tell of the reactions to misdeeds performed in all innocence when but a child in the lower consciousness, living in the lower nature below the Muladhara Chakra? How and whom does one tell of misdeeds performed during a lapse of conscience, even when living a life of dharma? A Shaivite confesses to God Shiva, the gods, or his guru. To confess to God Shiva, go to his temple and mentally, psychically place your burden at the holy feet of the murti in the sanctum sanctorum. To confess to gods Murgan or Ganesha, go to their temple and place your confession at their holy feet. Or go to your Sadguru and tell him of your inner plight, holding nothing back. This is how a Shaivite confesses inner burdens as he emerges out of the instinctive mind of the lower nature into the purified intellect of the higher nature. Yes, reconciliation is food for the soul. After the soul has unburdened itself of the dross of the lower mind through honest confession, a resolution must be made not to re-enter the lower states or rekindle the flames of the chakras below the muladhara. To achieve reconciliation by apology for hurts caused another, or to atone by performing acts of penance if a long time has passed since the apology could have been made and received, is truly food for the soul. There are many forms of penance. Prayaschitta, such as 1008 prostrations before gods Ganesha, Murgan, or Supreme God Shiva, apologizing and showing shame for misdeeds, performing japa slowly 1008 times on the holy Rudraksha beads, giving of 108 handmade gifts to the temple, performing manual chores at the temple for 108 hours, such as cleaning, making garlands, or arranging flowers, bringing offerings of cooked food, performing kavadi with miniature spears inserted in the flesh, making a pilgrimage by prostrating the body's length again and again, or rolling around a temple. All these and more are major means of atonement after each individual confession has been made. The keynote in serious cases is asking one Sadguru to give a specific penance once the problem has been revealed. Once the Sadguru is asked for penance, the penance must be performed exactly according to his instruction. It should be done with full energy and without delay. Deliberate delay or refusal to perform the penance shows the devotee has rejected the assistance of the Sadguru. Further advice and guidance will not be forthcoming until the instruction has been fulfilled. Therefore, a devotee in such a condition does not approach the Sadguru. He may, however, beseech the Guru's assistance and continued guidance if he is in the process of fulfilling the penance over a period of time. Sutra 121 of the Nandinada Sutras Valid Causes for Separation In marriages of Shiva's followers, adultery, severe neglect, verbal abuse and abandonment may be valid causes for separation but not divorce. Spiritual law recognizes no divorce and separation is hoped to be temporary. Om. Good morning and manakam. 
In this video, we'll be reading from Merging with Shiva, Hinduism's contemporary metaphysics written by Sadhguru Sivaya Subramanya Swami, 365 Enlightenment Lessons from a Mystical Master, Revealing the Depths of Raja Yoga, the Clear White Light, the States of Mind, and the Ultimate Spiritual Destiny of Every Seeker. Today's lesson is Lesson 121, and the topic is Love Conquers Selfishness. The action and reaction of the self-centered state of mind creates tension and discord in mind and body. Often when the diaphragm is tight, the muscles are tense, breathing is difficult, and your whole disposition is on edge. A person attains relaxation and peace through a benevolent act in which he loses himself in another's happiness. The cycles of tension and release, tension and release, which are constantly given birth to in the instinctive and intellectual state of mind, are only broken as the unfolding soul expresses itself in devotion, breaking up the crust of personal concern and hurt feelings. Love may also be thought of as the full expression of the intuitive mind, a continuing flow from the source of being. Most people would not be able to withstand the reaction to this force were it to be fully released within them. To suddenly relieve a person of all tension would be like making a poor man rich overnight. The instinctive mind feels lost and insecure under the impact of any sudden change in evolution. As the soul, the superconscious mind or the light of God begins to shine through the rest of the mind, the mind will either become reactionary or cooperative. Some people have a terrible fight within themselves as the soul begins to shine forth, and yet their only lasting satisfaction in life is in the outpouring of their individual soul qualities. Sometimes students of inner being are able to control their actions or their speech when they become disturbed, but the thought force projected by their suppressed sulking is just as negatively effective. Seeking to understand the condition that has upset you will give control of the negative force and eventually lift you into the state of love which conquers all things. Of course, the practice of understanding must begin at home. You must train yourself to know where you are in consciousness at all times. When you can become fully aware of the states of consciousness through which you pass, there will be no one whom you cannot understand, no one with whom you could not communicate through the medium of love. Until you learn the operation of this law as the sum of all laws, you will continue to harbor contention, to prefer argument and to walk the path of difference. Through bhakti yoga, the yoga of devotion, the combative mind becomes erased, absorbed into the consciousness of the one self, the being permeating all beings. And that's it for today's lesson. Take care of yourselves, have a beautiful day and we'll see you in the next video. Om Namah Shivaya.